In the previous video, we have discussed about the Shivaliks or the Outer Himalayas. Now, in this video, we are going to discuss about the Middle Himalayas. So, let's just begin. Now, Middle Himalayas are situated between Shivaliks in the south and the Great Himalayas in the north. So, Middle Himalayas run parallel to both Shivaliks in the south as well as the Great Himalayas in the north. So, just imagine that this is the Tibetan Plateau. To the south of Tibetan Plateau, you have the Great Himalayas or the Himadri. In the middle, you have Middle Himalayas. And to the south, you have Shivaliks or the Outer Himalayas. And to the south of Shivaliks, you have the Indo Gangetic Plain. So, Middle Himalayas are situated in between Shivaliks to the south and Great Himalayas to the north. And Middle Himalayas run more or less parallel to both the ranges. Clear? So, what are the other names for Middle Himalayas? They are also called Himachal or the Lower Himalaya. Clear, right? Now, so the region marked 2. So, this is the region where the Middle Himalayas are situated. Okay. So, you should have a clear picture of where the Middle Himalayas are situated. That is very, very important. Clear? So, you have already seen this map before. Now, proceeding. The Middle Himalayas are a complex system of ranges which are having elevations between 3,500 to 4,500 meters above sea level. But there are many mountains whose elevation is more than 5,000 meter and are snow covered throughout the year. So the Middle Himalayas, they contain many mountain ranges or a chain of mountains. Mountain range or a chain of mountains. So the entire Middle Himalayan region is a complex system of many mountain ranges and the average elevation of these mountain ranges varies between 3500 meters to 4500 meters but within the middle himalayas there are many mountains whose elevation is more than 5000 meter and which are covered by snow throughout the year clear now this concept is very 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 important so it has been asked many times in the exam previously so, this is a very important concept, the important ranges of the Middle Himalayas. The Pir Panchal range, the Dhauladar range, the Mussori range, the Naktibba range and the Mahabharat range. So, these are the important ranges of the Middle Himalayas. So, we will discuss about each and every range. Please don't worry about that. Now, let us first start with the Pir Panchal range. Now, this point is very, very, very important. The Pir Panjal range in Kashmir is the largest and the most important range of the Middle Himalayas. So, you can see the Pir Panjal range here, right? Now, just forget about Karukaram, Ladakh and Zaskar because these three ranges, they belong to Trans Himalayas. Okay. So, right now we are discussing the division of Himalayan ranges. Okay. So, first we spoke about the Shivaliks. Now, we are discussing about Middle Himalayas. After this, we are going to discuss about the Great Himalayas. And then we will proceed on to Trans Himalayas. So, Karukaram range, Ladakh range and Saskat range. Those are the mountain ranges of Trans Himalayas. So, just ignore them for now. So, the Pir Panchal and Dauladar range. These are the ranges of the Middle Himalayas. Clear, right? Now, the point written there, that is very, very important. The Pir Panjal range in Kashmir is the largest and the most important range of the Middle Himalayas. So, please, please keep this in mind. So, this is how the Pir Panjal range looks like from Srinagar. It's very, very beautiful, right? So, when the air pollution is less and when the weather is good, this is how it appears from Srinagar. The beautiful Pir Panjal range. Beautiful and majestic. Let me show you one more image. One more image of Pir Panjal range from Srinagar. So, it's very beautiful, right? Now, proceeding. The Pir Panjal range extends from the Jhelum River to the upper Bias River for a length of 350 to 400 kilometers. So, here you have the Jhelum River. So, from Jhelum River to upper Bias River. Okay, the Pir Panjal range extends like this from Jhelum River to upper Bias River for a length of 350 to 400 kilometers. 
and Pir Panjal range is spread across Himachal Pradesh, Jammu Kashmir and POK, Pakistan occupied Kashmir. Clear? These points are very simple, right? Now, the Pir Panjal range is separated from the Zaskar range. So, I told you about this, right? Zaskar range belongs to the Trans Himalayas. So, Pir Panjal range is separated from the Zaskar range by the Kashmir Valley. So, we will discuss about Kashmir Valley also in this video. And Pir Panjal range rises to 5000 meter and more in elevation. It means Pir Panjal range is the highest mountain range within the middle Himalayas. Okay. Now, the best passes of Pir Panjal range are the Pir Panjal Pass and the Banihal Pass. Now, these names are important guys because you are getting questions about mountain passes in prelims. So, please don't take this lightly. Now, we are discussing about the passes, mountain passes of Pir Panjal range. First of all, let us try to understand what a mountain pass is. A mountain pass is a navigable route through a mountain range. So, just imagine there is a mountain range like this. Now, this is a navigable route through which you can cross over the range. So, such paths through a mountain range are nothing but mountain passes. Clear, right? Now, the best passes of Pir Panjal range are the Pir Panjal Pass, which is situated at an elevation of 3,812 meters. And then you have the Banihal Pass at an elevation of 2,835 meters. So, please remember these names. These are very important. Now, the Banihal Pass is used by a very, very, very important road that is the Jammu Srinagar Highway. Okay. And also the Jammu Baramulla Railway. So, these are using the Banihal Pass. Now, this is an image of Banihal Railway Station. So, it is very beautiful, right? It is surrounded by snow capped mountains. So, this is the image of Banihal Railway Station. And it is using the Banihal Pass through the Pir Panjal range. So, the mountains you can find here, these are all the mountains of the Pir Panjal range. Clear? Now, let us discuss about the Kashmir Valley. Between the Pir Panjal range and the Zaskar range is the famous Kashmir Valley. Now, scientists say that Kashmir Valley is a basin. Now, what do you mean by basin? Basin is nothing but a depression in the land. Okay, so we will understand more about basins and how basins form in geomorphology. But as of now, please keep in mind that the Kashmir Valley is a basin and basin is nothing but a depression in the land. And it was a lake in Pleistocene age. When I say Pleistocene age, it lasted from 2.6 million years ago to 11,700 years ago. So, Pleistocene age is one of the time periods in geological time scale. So, it lasted from 2.6 million years ago to 11,700 years ago. So, the time span is Pleistocene age and the word MYA, it means million years ago. Okay. So, scientists say that Kashmir is a basin. The Kashmir Valley is actually a basin and a lake was, you know, existed there in Pleistocene age. And the basin was filled with sediments by the Himalayan rivers and it was uplifted to form the present day Kashmir Valley. So, this Kashmir basin was filled by sediments which the Himalayan rivers were carrying. So, eventually the land got uplifted and that is how the present day Kashmir Valley has formed. So, these are the important points about Kashmir and we have discussed all the important and relevant points. Clear? So, I hope you understood uh, this video. In this video, we have discussed about the Pir Panjal range of Middle Himalayas. In the next video, we are going to discuss about the other important ranges of Middle Himalayas. So, I hope you understood and enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching. Keep learning and all the best.